Hello, in this video we're going to look at the quotient rule of taking derivatives. Consider the function y. y equals g of x divided by h of x. The derivative is given by the following. We're going to take the derivative of the numerator and multiply it by the denominator, and then we're going to subtract what's in the numerator and multiply that by the derivative in the denominator. In the denominator, we're going to just square what we have down here. Let's do an example. So the g of x function is x squared plus 5, and the h of x function is 3x. We're going to take the derivative of the g of x function, and we get 2x. Here's the h of x function, which is in the denominator, and the derivative of that is just going to be 3. And now we're going to plug everything we have here into the appropriate spots in this formula. So rewriting the formula again and making our substitutions. The derivative of what's in the denominator is 2x, and that's multiplied by the numerator, 3x. And then we're going to subtract what we have in the numerator, all multiplied by the derivative in the denominator. And then what we have in the denominator, that entire thing is squared. If we want, we can simplify this a little bit. And simplifying some more, we get the following result. Let's do another example. Example two. So the numerator here is it's this g of x function. The derivative of that is going to be 8x plus 10. The denominator gives us the h of x function. Taking the derivative of that, we get 4x plus 1 writing our rule, and then making the appropriate substitutions. We get this result right here. Uh, we could simplify this a little bit, but in the interest of time, I won't do that. All right, let's move on to example three. G of x is 5x. The derivative of that is just 5. The denominator is the h of x function, and the derivative of that is just 7x. Here's the rule, and making our appropriate substitutions, we get the following result. Again, I'm not going to simplify this any further. And so now let's consider this function. We're going to find the partial derivative of the y function with respect to l. So the g function here is the numerator. And the derivative of that, or I should say the partial derivative of that with respect to l is 2k. And our h function here is what we have in the denominator. h is a function of k and l. And the partial derivative of this h function with respect to l is just going to be 1. And now here's our rule. We're going to take the, in this case, the partial derivative of what's in the numerator, this time with respect to L, and we're going to multiply that by the result in the denominator. And we're going to subtract out what we have in the numerator by the partial derivative of what we have in the denominator. And then again, in the denominator, everything is squared. So making our substitutions, and I'll simplify here a little bit we get the following result. Now let's do the other partial derivative. Let's, uh, in our next slide here, we're going to take the partial derivative of this function, but this time with respect to k. So in example five, we're going to find the partial derivative of y with respect to k. So here's our g function, which is a function of k and l. It's just the numerator. The partial derivative of the g function with respect to k is 2l. Here is our h function, k plus l. The partial derivative of our h function with respect to k is just 1. And now making our appropriate substitutions and simplifying a little bit, we get this result. Example 6, y equals 1 over x squared. So g of x is 1, 
the derivative of one, a constant in this case is just zero. H of x is x squared and the derivative of x squared is two x. Here's our rule. And now making our appropriate substitutions, we get minus two divided by x raised to the third power. And example seven just shows us that sometimes we can take our function and rewrite it so we can avoid using the quotient rule. Uh, sometimes it's just simpler to do it this way. Um, so our same example is number six. I'm just gonna bring this x squared term up into the numerator here. And then I'm going to use the power function rule where we're gonna bring the x exponent down in front. This minus two comes down in front and subtract one from that exponent. We get this result, and then we can move this x to the minus third power down into the denominator, and we get our same answer as we did in example six. Uh, instead of using the quotient rule, just rewriting the function so we can employ the power function rule. Okay, that's it.